Welcome to the Goddess and the Medicine Woman with Melissa McHugh and Sydney Decker. Four. Three, two, one. <laughs> Who's that? that Who's that? Hi. She gets to be featured on the podcast. She's our spirit animal. Hi, Mooney. And ZZ loves you. <laughs> she is actually being really good because Love. usually she's like jumping in, knocking stuff over, being like, you're not paying attention to me? What? Yeah. And now she's actually just chilling today. What are you drinking today? What? What are you drinking today? Oh, it's my own concoction. It's like the one thing that I give into. I found it on Pinterest like three years oh. ago. And it's like this drink that this girl made at Starbucks. And I was like, I got to try it. It's like a mix of like, it's got white mocha, caramel drizzle. Cre it's like the worst thing for you, but it tastes so delicious. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, but it sounds so yummy. Yeah, it does. And everyone that sees it, they're like, what is that? What's on that? What? Where's that on the menu? And I'm like, oh, it's like my own little concoction. And it's like the only thing that I do. I have to get it every morning for some reason. It's like my brain food to wake me up. But it's also, it really isn't healthy. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think that, you know, as human beings, <laughs> sometimes it's just those things, the fun things, man, whatever. I have my tea, but of course, you know, I can't drink coffee. Tea for me. What kind of tea is tea. it? Tea. Tea for me. This is my Davidson um, chamomile tea Ooh. that I always share with my clients. My clients absolutely love the chamomile. And sometimes uh, I have some um, uh, lavender from the garden. That I'll sprinkle in there too, and it's just super aromatic and just very uh, salud, very um, just kind of like ah, uh, just makes you feel like really good, get you in the mood to talk about stuff and you know do some healing. So that's what I have today. Actually, that's really interesting. Um, when you said about the lavender, sometimes you put the lavender in it. I went out to eat with a friend, and we went to this place. Um, in Lawrenceville, which is where by where I live. I don't want to give too many deets about where I live. But um, they have this drink that's like honey, lavender, ginger lemonade or whatever. And I tried it and it was so good. They actually put real lavender petals in it. And it nice. was like a different thing. Because I've had like lavender syrups before and everything. But yeah. this place was like very good at like their small plates and like what they put in. It's like real stuff. And it does make a difference. I really did. Like, it felt refreshing, but also calming because, like, the real yeah. petals were in there. And it just was like, I could drink that all the time. Honestly, I would switch over to yeah. that <laughs> than my coffee <laughs> because it was so good. Yeah, I just picked some lavender from my garden yesterday. And I have it drying right now. So I'm just like, you know, it's funny. On, we're not on video right now everywhere, but. When you look on video, like everything closer to the camera is like so big, like, look at my hands, look at my hands. <laughs> <laughs> and then my head is little, tiny little head, big hands, little head. What do I look like? <laughs> do I have a big head? You just look like you. Well, I can't really see your head because you're um, too far up in the camera. There you go. Now I can see really? you. See, mine looks completely yeah. different here. Am I better? Am I more in yeah. it now? No. Now I can't see your eyes. What the heck? I can I literally know. see all of me and all of you. What about now? <laughs> I don't know. That's better. I don't. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I do think it's interesting right, well, that we're, of course, we're always in alignment because last time we were both at our desks ready to go for our first one. Yeah. And then here we are, we'll chilling on couches, relaxing. Like, yeah. It's like, with my sweatpants on. Oh, I'm I like, you know what? I need to come see. That's the good part about you podcasts. Come for this. <laughs> like, I can exactly. do this from my couch. Yeah, no doubt. Awesome. Awesomeness. Yeah, I was thinking about maybe doing some, like, calisthenics, like Tony Robbins, and getting myself, you know how he does? He, like, jumps around before his thing, gets all in the mood. Yeah, <laughs> it's does. like, I don't know. Do I really want to feel that excited, though? I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Get my adrenaline pumping. That's actually a very <laughs> interesting point, because when 
we think about this podcast and starting this podcast, we come at it from a lot of times of like, what are our listeners going to think? What are we going to, how do I get prepared for them? And it's like, we just got to do it for us. You know, we got to just show up where we are at because that's what's going to hold the space and bring in the energy and everything because it's like with everything, you know, it's always like they, what will they say? What will they think? What are they doing? And it's like, who are they? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I've been asking, anytime I hear they wouldn't like this, I'm like, who's they? Like I start questioning that voice. It's like, they would this, they think this, they'll say this. And it's like, who? Like, realistically, who and what, okay. Right, the realistic who. Right, and, like, realistically, okay, they they do say that. Are you alive? Yeah. Or did you survive what they said? Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? It's, like, I'm really starting to, like, notice that because there is this tendency for us because we are such connected beings. And when you grow up, especially as children and society and school tells you, it's always they are telling you something. Your parents, the coaches, the teachers, whoever it is, someone is telling you something. And so you get this voice in your head as you grow up. And even as an adult, well, they wouldn't like this and they won't want me there and I shouldn't do this. And I, what are they going to think if I do this? Or what's society going to think? It's like when people started dyeing their hair like pink and stuff, you know, everyone, you would see someone with pink hair and you'd be like, oh no, they're weird because they, they didn't fit in with society. And then nowadays it's like, you walk around and everyone has different colored hair. Like, I just put different color in my hair, you know? Yeah. If you don't have different color hair now, you're, oh, look at them. They're not <laughs> going with the whole flow. Right. <laughs> so it's like what they say doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Like, I'm realizing that in a yeah. big way. It's like, I'm they, and I say this. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, in your own mind. Well, cool. Yeah. Well, you know, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's move forward with this. This is our second um, episode. And I just want to thank everybody out there. If they are there, (laughs) is there anybody out there? If they are, yay. (laughs) Thanks for listening. And also um, we just put like a little button on our um, podcast now and anchor and you can support us there. Um, anybody that wants to support us now, they can just go on and click that and do a kind of a little donation thing so we can keep moving forward with this. If it resonates with you, great. If it doesn't, great. No <laughs> cool. That's fine too. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. All good. So um, I think today we wanted to talk a little bit about what Sydney and I do. Um, somebody that listened in last time was like, you talked about your clients and then, but We don't really know, like, what are your clients? Who are you? What's going on with that whole thing? So I thought we should probably let people know that don't know us what's going on Oh, everyone knows us. I'm just kidding. Everybody knows us. We're the goddess and the most woman. (laughs) Well, okay, so who am I? What do I do? Um, I have a business, and it's called The Spiritual Tools with Melissa McHugh. And... um, I work with a lot, mostly a lot of women, and they come to me looking for help because they're stuck in some way in their lives. A lot of them come to me with anxiety, depression, stemming from not feeling like they're good enough, not feeling like they are worthy. They're stuck in these um, relationships sometimes they don't feel good about, and just feeling like something's not right. And so what I do is I walk beside them and kind of become a mentor for them to take them from the place that they're in that's not comfortable, that they don't want to be in anymore, and move alongside them into a place of peace and um, empowerment. And the empowerment part for me is the biggest thing, I guess, um, especially as women who have not felt empowered in a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And have had a role to play um, in life, it seems like, for for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, they're just like, wait a minute, you know, this just doesn't feel right anymore. Mm -hmm. So just to let them know that, you know, they have the choice always and that they can move from where they are into a place of, you know, joy and peace 
and empowerment, um, you know, happiness, sadness, uh, all that stuff is transient. It's always changing. One day we're happy, one day we're sad, one day we're excited, one day we're like feeling blah. That's because we're human beings. So that stuff's always going to move. But behind the scenes of all of that, we can decide to be powerful and peaceful as human beings going through our life. Joyful, even when we're sad. Peaceful, even when we're mad. So I try to help women um, get to that place. And I use uh, Reiki, crystal Reiki. I use meditation. And I use EFT tapping, which is emotional freedom technique. And sometimes I use all of those things in one session. Sometimes I just use one or the other. Um, you know, aromatherapy. I like to use essential oils with stuff. And so when somebody comes up to see me, um, I have a very uh, peaceful atmosphere that they can walk into. I hold space for them. And we sit down and we have some tea. And we talk about what's going on. And then um, I assist them in moving forward and getting to that place where they want to be. Awesome. And so that's what I do. Would you be able to describe like what maybe a general typical session with you would look like? You know, I know it's going to be different for every person, but just so people really understand what that looks like, you know, because some people might not know what Reiki is. Some people might not know what EFT is yet. Some people might not even know what meditation is in the sense that you're thinking about and talking about it because some people think that meditation is oh we silence the mind when it's more of creating a stillness in the body you know what i'm saying so what would a typical session with you look like well if we're doing if i was doing a typical session and kind of incorporating all of those things um like i said the person would show up they would come in we'd sit down and we have some tea um, and then I'd ask Why them, do you, choose you know, tea? what's going on with you? I choose tea because, um, like with chamomile, lavender, all of that, I want to create, um, a very relaxing environment. You know, somebody walks into my place, everybody that walks in is just like, oh, it's just so calm here. That's what I try to create is the calmness from the first moment you step in, um, because when our bodies are calm, our minds are calm, then, you know, all, all is well then, you know, and our bodies can start to heal in the midst of calmness, you know, so that's exactly what I try to bring to every single session is, you know, and a lot of the times, especially if somebody has never been to see me before, they'll walk in and they're just so super anxious. It's a new place. It's a new person. It's a new environment. It's a, they might not have ever done Reiki or EFT or any of this before. They don't know what to expect. So from the moment that they walk in my door, I want them to feel extremely calm, um, zero anxiety, you know, because they, they're bringing in their own anxiety. So I don't want to perpetuate that in any way. So, and, and also just talking about things for the first time. Sometimes, you know, you have these issues and you've not really opened up about them to anybody before. Right. So that's anxiety, um, brings on anxiety as well. Right. So, yeah, so somebody would walk in, sit down, we have some tea. We start to talk a little bit about, you know, what's going on? Why are you there? What, what do you need? And if somebody is super anxious, I might just start right off and say, okay, let's do some meditation. And I'll take them into like a heart activation meditation and echo meditation, mm -hmm. um, breathing into your heart, into your body, bringing, bringing your awareness from your mind, which is causing all this agitation down into your body, into a different, you know, place. Mm -hmm. I might do some EFT tapping because that reduces all the cortisol and adrenaline in your body. And that brings you to a place to where then you can start to heal mm -hmm. as well. So you might do, you know, some of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we've decided, you know, what we're gonna do moving forward with say Reiki, then we'll move on into 
my Reiki area. A person will lie down on the table. We might do some more meditation there as well. Um, I do have aromatherapy set up, and that's also for the calming effect. I use a lot of lavender oil mm -hmm. for that. Um, there's also like different oils called alignment and elevation and different things like that, depending on what you're looking mm -hmm. for. We, um, a lot of times I'll use crystals, mm -hmm. incorporate crystals into the Reiki as well, because crystals have all of their own properties too, and that they bring mm -hmm. to the table. So it just depends on, you know, what, what we're looking to accomplish. So then I just start my, um, my Reiki session with them. And Reiki is a technique where we're bringing in source energy, channeling it through. As a Reiki practitioner, you channel the Reiki energy through you, and it comes then out through your hands. And we learn how to do this. Um, you know, we do different uh, meditations, rituals, um, and, uh, you know, just different ways to facilitate that energy. And then we just go right into a Reiki session. The person lies there. They don't have to do anything. I might move them through, a, you know, a meditation at the beginning. And then you just lie there. And then the um, healing energy from source, the universe, God, whatever it is that, you know, you believe in, we set an intention for that healing to occur. And then it's, this session takes usually about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And during that, you know, the, the energy will move through the person. Um, hopefully unblocking different areas in the body, you know, the physical parts. Um, it also works with like your aura as well, energetic body. Mm -hmm. And then it just facilitates healing. It facilitates the, um, you know, calming and bringing everything to a place to where your body can heal itself. As well. Also, yeah, I do Reiki as well, so... I wanted just just for everyone who really needed to know like okay so i wanna go see melissa how do i what's that gonna be like what's it gonna kind of look like so i just wanted to give people a little bit more of a description of your individual service you know because there's gonna be there's yeah. a lot of different practitioners out there doing different things that are similar to each other you know so it's like well yep what does that session look like with you particularly because it might not look that way that's also another thing to let our um, listeners know you know just what one practitioner does it's not like a generaliz generalization across the board it's like every practitioner brings their own unique healing energy every Reiki practitioner does it a little different whatever it is I mean it's all it's very similar but it's just good to know about what a typical session with you particularly would look like yeah, because Reiki is Reiki. Reiki's the energy from source moving through you into the other person's body. Um, but we all have our own unique gifts. So there are Reiki practitioners who um, also like can read people, can see things during a session. Um, you know, I also can pick up on people's ancestors and guides and angels. Um, a lot of messages come through from uh, these other other realms, whatever, wherever it is that they are. And so all Reiki practitioners have gifts to share as well mm -hmm. with people. Um, and they're not all uh, cookie cutter. It's not always going to be the mm -hmm. same, for sure. Yeah, and I really think that right now Reiki is on the rise as far as it coming to people's awarenesses. And it's also something that is very beneficial for everyone to do right now because we're, I, we're all in some way, in some degree, in some level, moving through some major looking at ourselves, you know, and noticing vibes and energies and people who I never thought would say vibe is now saying like, I feel like my vibe's off or my energy or something's not right. I feel like something needs to change and stuff. And Reiki is a really great way to to move out what you don't even know what you need to move out. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it just creates this space of flow of energy and you'll notice, like you'll feel the heat and the warmth and stuff when you're receiving the Reiki healing. But I really do believe right now it would be beneficial for almost anyone to just try, you know, because we're all tapping into a bigger part of energy, a bigger piece of ourselves, our 
learning about what vibration is and how energy impacts our life and what the energy that we're holding and how we manifest that into our reality and stuff. And a really good way to just kind of start your path and just start moving energy out and just to get your feet a little, dip your toes into the energetic realm, a really safe way to do that is Reiki. Yeah. I mean, definitely yep. be mindful of the Reiki practitioner that you're working with of everyone as everything, you know, you always want to pick, um, the person that you're in alignment with, you know, the practitioner that you're in alignment with, but it's a really great thing to start doing just to try out right now in general. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. So what is it that you do? Sydney Decker, who are you and what do you know? (laughs) So I started my practitioner journey and adventure as an Ayurveda health practitioner, an Ayurveda health counselor. So I know many people may not have ever heard of Ayurveda. I feel like that could be its own podcast all on its own. I will briefly just kind of explain it right now so that way people know what I'm talking about. So Ayurveda is known as the science of life. That's what the word translates to. And it is basically the science of nature and all things that exist and live and how everything is interconnected, how the basic blueprint of how the world operates and how we as individuals operate is based on the five elements, air, space, fire, water, and earth. And how these energies combine to create our natural world as well as our human world. And um, I actually just taught a workshop on this yesterday. So it was pretty cool for everyone to kind of get this information and for them to be like, oh yeah, that does make a lot of sense. So for example, there's air, space, fire, water, and earth. And so if you think about in your body, because it's like, okay, well, how do these elements show up in my life and in my body? Well, you're breathing, that's air. And you know, it's like I gave the example of like, gases, bloating, like, you know, if you burp, that's air, you know, in your body, that's just, that's always going on. And every time we're breathing, that's a, I kind of explained it yesterday. It's like, that's a dance that we have with the universe is our breath, is the air and that, that dance of breathing in and exhaling out. And that's just what we're all doing. Trees do it, plants do it, animals do it. It's like, that's how we say, hello, I love you. Hello, I love you. It's like, that's the flow of life, right? Then we have fire. So if you think about fire, you're going to, in the body, it's going to be our metabolism, things that break down in the body. And if you look at the cellular structure too, cells are, um, have an internal fire because they digest things and break things down. Um, if you look at your eyesight, if you, when scientists look at it, they're actually like little fire receptors. And that's how we see lights and different things because it's an interaction of light and fire in our bodies. And that's actually... It seems so simple, air, space, fire, water, and earth, but that once I start to view it in the body, it does become complex in its own way, you know? And then if you think about water, that's going to be like our mucous membranes, our spinal fluid, our digestive fluid, you know, we have that water in our body as well. And even people will um, have issues with water retention in their body, you know, they're, they're they're storing too much water, or some people have, they're not having enough water, you know, you need that balance too, so that's how it's in the body. And then earth. So earth is, you think of it as like structural. You see like rocks and mountains and that type of thing. That's our bone structure. You know, our bones, our muscles, anything that's more of like a con, not, I won't say concrete in like the actual concrete sense, but more of like a form. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be more earth. And another thing that I shared with the, those who came to the workshop yesterday is in order for us to be on this planet, we have to be made up of the elements that it's made up of. We won't, we wouldn't be able to be here if we weren't made up of what this world is made up of. So the earth itself also in our reality that we interact with, think about it. When you look up, there is space. You know, we actually have space. We look up at space. We drink water. We use fire to cook things. We, wind blows things around, you know, earth is around us. We're walking on earth. Like there's, it's everywhere. So basically I help people to understand what their basic 
elemental blueprint is. So are they primarily fire element? Are they water, earth, air, space? And there's different com combinations and all individuals will show up individually. You know, it'll all be different for each. Everyone has their own unique essence. And I help you to understand how th this element shows up in your life and how your thoughts, your personality, your, your body structure, how certain foods, if you're super earthy, you're not going to want to eat a lot of greasy foods because that's going to create more earth element in your body. So that's going to create more weight. You're going to feel heavier. You're not, you're going to have slower digestion because you're earth. So if you think about like a mountain, if you keep adding rocks to a mountain, it's just going to keep getting bigger. You know, if you want to make a smaller mountain, you have to take rocks away. So that's where you're going to want to eat more raw vegetables, salads, soups, like things that create more of like an earthy or not an earthy, an airy element in your body to reduce the heaviness. You know, some people don't even have know that that's possible. Like I'm trying to lose weight and I'm trying to do all these things. What's the problem here? It's like, well, let's look at your element. You know, let's look and see maybe what you're, you read as the general thing out there to lose weight isn't going to work for you because your element is different from that generalization. So I help to create a, a very in-depth look at your life and I create a very in-depth wellness report that outlines your nutrition, your lifestyle, yoga practices, meditation practices, I recommend books for people to read just to help them to get to know their truth and who they really are. That's my Ayurvedic type of way of doing things. Um, I also do Ayurvedic body work, so I'm not a massage therapist. A lot of people get that confused. I am an Ayurvedic body work technician and I do Ayurvedic body work. So when you come to see me, yes, I am putting warm oils, herbal oils onto your body, but my approach to it is not coming from a massage therapist perspective. I'm not working on, okay, where's this knot? How do I get this knot out? Or how do I manipulate the muscle? Those types of things. It's a similar thing to Reiki that you do. It's how can I get the body into a state of relaxation to allow this person to start to heal themselves? So there's a specific sequence that you, when you're learning Ayurvedic body work, that puts, that soothes the sympathetic nervous system in the body so that, that, that your, your sympathetic nervous system is that fight or flight, you know, which a lot of us get stuck in. So that's usually where we make a lot of decisions. Okay, this is happening. Do I run or do I freeze? Do I run or do I freeze? Do I run or do I freeze? And so to get you out of that, do I run or I freeze to get into a state of peace and calm so that way your body can start to go to those cells and those stressful areas and bring healing. You know, the body and the mind really, like you said, do know what to do if given the appropriate environment to do it. So that's how Ayurvedic body work works. I use the correct herbal oils. I use the correct sequence to get you to a state of relaxation. A lot of my clients do fall asleep. Um, and everyone that gets an Ayurvedic body work treatment, they're not like, oh yeah, thanks for getting that knot out. They're like, wow, I really dropped deep, <laughs> or thank you, I feel way more calm, or I feel more peaceful, I feel overall better, my mind feels clearer, I feel like I let something go emotionally. You know, there's like a, it's a different type of treatment in that regard, you know, because I'm not just focused on the physical. I'm doing a lot of other mental, emotional components. And then even while I'm working on people, I will play meditations for people in regards to what their specific condition is that they're trying to move through. So I do sit down with people first to kind of get to know. I don't like to just, yeah, sure, get on the table. You know, I, what are we working on? What's your intention? You know, it's very intentional. I'm very intentional on in what energy I'm bringing to these people and to my clients. I'm very intentional on how this the treatment's going to go. There's a specific thing. It's almost like a ceremony. You know what I mean? It's almost like a sacred ceremony for every client that comes to see me in that regard. Um, I also do, I have termed myself this. <laughs> I'm an intuitive healer. It's just <laughs> what I am. Um, I'm just becoming more and more intuitive as the days go on almost. And I do intuitive guidance sessions. So 
that's going to be a little bit different than the Ayurvedic consultations. That's where we're starting to really look at your mind body type, your dosha, your elements, you know, creating that very um, thorough, in depth wellness report, you know, starting to do that type of thing. But I also do intuitive guidance sessions. So this is where I sit down and I'm an energy reader and I'm an energy channeler. So I channel um, higher vibrational energy. And I am also able to read a person beyond just their physical, mental, and emotional. I can actually see into their larger multidimensional beingness, which is a word that is going to be a new buzzword coming around, but also into their soul. And I know soul can be kind of like a trigger word because it's like, okay, do I believe is there a soul or not? But what I mean by soul is just your energetic being that's guiding everything. You know, I don't, we don't need to get into, do we, is the soul in the machine, the ghost in the machine, all that stuff. It's just your energy. I'm reading that bigger part beyond just your conscious, do I eat food? Do I not eat food? Am I hungry? You know, walking through that regular conscious brain that we go through. So I'll sit down with a client and I will read their energy. I'll see what their blocks are. I'll see what into their, what their childhood trauma has been. We'll work on that but we'll really work on removing those blocks, going into the subconscious mind. I do that through just reading them, asking questions, affirmations, visualizations, meditation. It's gonna look different for every single person, but I can also read into certain situations, relationships. I've actually been working with some clients that have been doing some really intense dream work, some really intense like uh, past life work and helping them to move through how to um, work through that past life stuff that's causing an energy issues in their, pro in their life right now. And then also dreams are a very big piece of our subconscious. So helping some people to understand what those messages mean, bringing them in. And people, I'm telling you, clients are having, by just getting those readings done, not even just the body work, or the Reiki that I, I also do Reiki. Um, I'll do Reiki a lot after I do my intuitive guidance session because I'll tell them like, oh, well, you need to bring more peace into your life. And they're like, how do I do that? So I'll just immerse them in the energy of peace because sometimes you can't explain an energy. They have People have to experience an energy to really understand it. So I really work a lot with people's subconscious minds and implementing and helping them to get the energy that they want to transform their life. We work a lot with manifestation, what's blocking you, clearing that out, replacing it, working through the chakras, working through the journey of the human being, which is the journey of the chakras. I know this is a lot of like stuff that these could all be podcast things on, but I love what I do. And I, the intuitive, I do phone sessions. I have clients um, in other states that I do phone sessions on. I'm very capable of even reading people via phone in a, I have a client that's in California right now. I can read them across the country and it's very helpful and very supportive. And I've been working with them for years, you know? And it's something that if anyone wants to work with me who's listening or whatever, and you're not sure about the body work treatments or anything, I love doing phone sessions. I can do it just as well over the phone or virtually. Um, but I really believe that it's a good time to start looking at our energy fields looking at what energy we're holding, what's going on, and how, and start to reach out to practitioners to start making those changes. And I just really help yeah. you to remember who you truly are beyond what they think, what they told you, what you learned as a child to tap into who you are. You know, maybe you've always wanted to be a dancer on Broadway and they said you can't do it. I tell you, you're a dancer on Broadway. Let's figure it out. You're going to get there. You know, I really want to work with people yeah. to become who they are. It's time. It's time for the peace. It's time for the joy. It's time for the love. And I'm here for it. And I'm here to help any way that I can by reading, Ayurveda, whatever tools I have. Um, but I meet everyone where they are at, and I meet everyone individually. That's, like, the coolest thing that I love doing. It's all individual. So that's kind of what I do. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. You know, and when you were talking about that, I remember um, last night we had a really intense conversation together. You were moving through some stuff 
and we moved through your stuff. And I was also moving through some stuff, really not knowing what to do about it because a lot of this deep work, sometimes it comes to a point to where you're like, okay, I know I need to get rid of this. I have no idea how. I don't know what to do. I am stuck. I have been stuck with this thing, this demon inside of me for a long ass time. And really, <laughs> it was quite amazing because really the only thing that we did was yeah. talk about it. We talked about it. You held space for me. You pointed out a few things that were going on that I needed to look at. After our conversation was over, I felt seen. I felt heard. I felt a little afraid, but you told me what to do mm -hmm. to not feel so afraid. And I did those things and I laid there and I released a lot of uh, whatever it was that I was moving through. It was deep. It was dark. I had to go there um, because, you know, you go get to a point in your spiritual journey where you've released all the easy stuff. You know, it's like, oh, la, la, la. And okay, I'm releasing this and get by that. And that was not so bad. And then you get towards, <laughs> towards a place to where the darkest forest mm -hmm. is in front of you. The gnarliest demons are poking their heads out and whispering in your ear. And you're afraid. You know, stuff that happened to you when you were a child and if you had any sort of trauma, um, yeah, it's there. And it's something that you need to move through. And it's hard. And so I am super thankful that I have someone that I can talk to about it that knows, that can hold space, that knows what, you know, to do, give me advice on what to do, mm -hmm. how to do it safely. And, you know, it's all safe. And I don't mean safely like, oh, no. The... But when you're moving back through trauma, things that happened to you um, that weren't pretty, right. it can feel very unsafe. You know, you are safe. It's the feelings that you have to feel that you felt before that are coming back through again so that you can look at them and they can leave. You have to feel it again. But it's so great to have somebody that you can, um, that can walk alongside of you during this, holding your hand yes. in the forest. Um, so I just think that that's a huge thing. And it was a huge thing for me yeah, last I, night. Well, I also was moving through a really big piece, um, which I do want to share a little bit about because I think that it will actually explain a lot about what. I do what we do, where this podcast is going and different things. But before I do that, while you were saying that, something came to my mind. And when you were like, I felt seen, heard, and understood. You know, those are the three basic necessities of the human being, really. Yeah, we need food, we need water, we need clothes. But even before that, we need to be seen, to be heard, and to be understood. Those are the three things that we as human beings are always striving for, you know, any, if you look at our blocks, if you look at our pain bodies that we've created, if you look at our shadows or our demons, it came from a point of, we weren't seen, we weren't heard, and we weren't being understood. You know, so it's like, those are the pieces that we need to start being able to see ourselves, to understand ourselves, and to hear ourselves so that way we can move through whatever the, the the trauma has been or the energy that's stuck in us it's like usually the remedy is to see it to hear it understand where it came from and let it go are you there okay. i'm here yep I turned on low data mode and uh, you might not be able to see me, but we're still recording. And Okay, I just um, wanted to make sure because I was like, am I talking to nothing? Everything. <laughs> yep, okay. you are. Everything's so good. That is a really good piece to bring up. You know, it's like those are when people are like, well, I don't know what's why this or whatever. Well, did you feel seen? No. Did you feel heard? Not really. Were you understood? Not at all. Okay. You know, that's really where a lot of that root pain is. But when you start to see yourself, you start to hear yourself, and you start to understand yourself. Speaking of from experience, you know, I work as a healer, 
and that's my job, but I also do a lot of my own healing. And the biggest piece that came through to me as I've been doing my own healing is a lot of my life, I have not been seen. I have not been heard. I have not been understood. And I didn't even know that I could see, hear, or understand myself. And it wasn't until I started really looking at my pain and my trauma and different pieces of myself and really seeing myself, hearing myself, understanding myself and bringing, which is compassion. Those are compassionate things. Those, that together creates compassion and being compassionate with myself and giving myself permission to say, I see you, you know, that really was hard, wasn't it? That really was a challenge, huh? You really didn't feel good then, did you? You know, rather than giving the authority over to, they said I'm fine. They said that I shouldn't, whatever. They said I'm being dramatic. They said whatever. It's like, they weren't seeing me, hearing me, understanding me, and those pieces had followed me for a long time. Because it's like, if I started to feel something, I'm being dramatic. If I started, well, they don't really want to hear that. I can't say that. Or the last time I said that, they didn't care. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, as you start to heal and you start to look at yourself and to start to say, I'm worthy of being seen and heard and understood. And I'm not talking about anyone other than by your own self. That is when. You start to remember who you are and you start to move into a new way of being uh, like you said at the beginning when you were talking about helping women who even if you're angry there's this peace even if you're upset by something there's this calmness even if there's something going on in your life there's this anchor of i got me that's what we all need to create right now i shouldn't say need i don't want to i'm always being careful about telling people what to do right now <laughs> But it really comes down to <laughs> that, being able, that's what keeps that peace going. That's what keeps that calm going, is knowing that you have your own back. You understand, of course I'm upset by this, 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 and this. I'm going to calmly and peacefully state my feelings about the situation, and how they respond is how they respond. I see myself, hear myself, understand myself, got this, you know? Now that I can't see you, I don't know if you're nodding or not. Yes, I'm nodding <laughs> profusely. <laughs> Was there anything yeah. you wanted to add within yeah. that? It's very cool. Nope, yeah. I'm good on that. I'm good on that. I'd like to hear uh, about what you went through um, a little bit last night because I think that it's going to be really helpful for people. I know that it's um, a little bit yeah. deep and yeah. um, dark. So just want to kind of put that out there, um, you know, for people so that they're not, that they're aware that there might be a few triggers in there for certain people that have, you know, gone through certain things in their lives. But it's also very therapeutic, I believe, um, to listen to the story and, and how Sydney's moving through a lot of this uh, pain and that's in her a great life. point because you said even when we did, because I reached out to you to kind of work through it last night to have someone see me, hear me, and understand me as I was doing it for myself. Um, it also, I want to say, this is my hope and my intent and my goal with this podcast is to bring really powerful healing discussions to the table. So that way, because it's like by witnessing my experience that I was having that I'll share in just a moment you also were given permission to have your own healing experience around your own situation, you know? So that's where yeah. I, my hope and my intent by sharing some of my personal experiences, which is difficult for me. You know, I hear this voice that's like, no, don't say it. They'll know who you are. They'll know all your deep, dark secrets. And it's like, true, you know, but I feel like now is the time to be raw, to be personal, to be real, to be honest, and to show up with what it means to be a human being. So my intent with sharing this story is to share my experience of the story and my healing around my story and my pain and the demons that I'm facing. And so when you hear this, yes, it is a little sensitive to some people who have been, been in a similar situation that I have been growing up, or even now are um, engaging with certain people who may be behaving in the way that the person that I will be talking about behaved in my childhood. You know, so just 
hear me out and just listen the best that you can and just know too that if anything is stirred up that there are services that you can reach out to both Melissa and myself if need be to talk about this type of stuff that's why we wanted to take the time to introduce ourselves and who we are so you know that we are healers who know what we're doing on a certain level of you know every healing's a journey but we know what we're doing in regards to what we know what we're doing does that make sense i got it okay. yeah, i got it i got it okay so yeah last night which is funny because little things will start when you're on a healing journey and you're looking at stuff and you're ready to go even the littlest things will start a healing for you <clears throat> so basically last night you okay well actually i should start preface this i do a lot of yoga and i did a yoga retreat on saturday which opened up a lot of myself to myself we focused a lot on self-love and blessing ourselves and a lot of my early upbringing um, not my early upbringing, but I would say there was a certain part in my life and in my, um, I would say more as a teenager, I really took this on, of self-hate and condemning myself, mostly. You know, so for a big period of my life, it was I hate myself, I condemn myself. So to sit for four hours in the healing energy of blessing myself and loving myself, yeah, that's going to start some things, right? That's going to stir some things up. And so I started to feel, I just cried. I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried throughout, throughout the whole entire yoga retreat, which was on Saturday. So then yesterday, I, and I felt sick and I could just feel all this. And I was seeing flashes and pictures of things in my life that were centralized around condemning myself or um, hating myself or whatever. I could see these images and these memories and even ones I wasn't actively remembering. And I went to that place and the mantra that we were saying is I bless myself, I bless myself, I am, I am. And I would go to those places and I could feel the light inside of me changing that situation and I would just cry and cry. It was like, I, it was like the energy of the love was finally touching the energy of the hate and transforming it. And it just was like profound. So I cried and then, um, all the next day, I, I've been feeling, you know, just tired and like just letting things move through me. And I could tell that there's a big piece that wanted to move through me. And I wasn't sure about it because I wasn't, I was so tired, you know, I'm like, how do I get this piece out of me? It's like, there's just been this one big particular thing that I've been working through what seems like my whole entire life. And I was asking a lot of questions around it and it has a lot to do with my father and my relationship with my father and the relationship that I created with my own self based on the relationship that I had with my father growing up. And I will just kind of preface this. This is why some of it may be, um, it's a little bit sensitive, but I do believe that it's important because we are real human beings having real experiences. And so when I say this word, just be prepared for it. Um, my father committed suicide eight years ago. And before then, he struggled with alcoholism as well. And I love my dad. And I think that my dad did the best that he possibly could do. And we did have a good relationship um, later on in my life when I was a little bit older. And we had a good relationship before his drinking really set in when I was seven. Um, so before that, I had a really good relationship with him. That's why this was such a big change in my life when I turned seven and stuff that I started to have these interactions because he was very there for me. He was very present in my life, very loving, very just my dad. You know, like I was daddy's little girl in that regard. And I remember he would come to my room and like tuck me in real tight and like all this stuff. And I just, I have always loved my dad, of course, you know. I think for a lot of girls and women, it's like your dad's almost like your first love in a way. You know, you look up to them and they're on this pedestal and they're just your dad. So I had this big 
awakening moment when I was watching the new Thor movie last night. And it gets to this point, I don't want to ruin it for everyone, so if you've not seen the movie, maybe skip this part that I'm telling you what happens at the end of the movie, because it's what brought me to this place of my healing that I'm going to go into. And so I'm watching the new Thor movie, it gets to the ending where the one guy, the bad guy gets to eternity and Thor's like, hey, like, you don't have to be a bad guy anymore, you can choose love, like, just do it, it's the best option. And so the bad guy's like, all right, you know, you're right, I'll try it out. And his daughter died. So he now knows that he's dying, so he's like, okay, well, well, I don't want to bring her back if I'm going to die. And then Thor's like, just bring her back, I got her, I'll take care of her. So the bad guy makes his wish to eternity, and he brings his daughter back, and he's laying there now on the ground, and this, the bad guy's dying, and his daughter is now cradling him and looking down into his eyes, and he's looking into her eyes, and he's crying, and he looks, and I'm getting chills even now, because it's like just this moment, and he looks over at Thor, and he goes, protect my love, because he chose love, which is his daughter. And man, did I get triggered. Like, I just started bawling and bawling and crying and crying. And I was like, whoa, what is this about? And I just, rem I was like flashed to the day that my dad died. And I was like flashed to all these pieces of like my relationship with my dad and how I felt that moment with my dad. You know, like, where he, it's like, I don't know how to explain it any other way of, like, I felt like that was me and my dad in that movie. And it just brought all these emotions up. And I did call you to kind of talk about it. And I was sobbing on the phone. And I just was, like, very emotional. And I just said, I finally got to my core abandonment wound. And I'm healing it. And I just was crying. And I was sobbing in a way that, like, it felt like the day that I found out that he died and I just was like sobbing and I just started seeing all these pieces of my relationship with him and I remembered that as a child when I was like seven years old I don't know remember exactly what age but that's when my dad really started drinking and I was alone with him a lot because um, my mom would work late and I was with him a lot of the time and so I saw his darkness, you know, he never, it would just be drinking, but as a child, you know, we, especially nowadays, we're, we weren't conscious a lot of energy back then, you know, of what energy does and environments and different things. And now as we're moving more forward in our collective consciousness and just our own selves and our relationships with ourselves, energy is becoming a very real thing and environments are becoming a very real thing and scientists and psychologists and a lot of are looking at energy and environments and stuff, but I was growing up in that environment, which I didn't know at the time, but now that I know as a seer and intuitive healer that I've always had these gifts, that I was seeing his demons and his darkness. And I, at one point, I can't remember exactly what age it was, I remember saying to the universe, to anything. I was laying there one night and I said, give that to me. Give me his suffering. Give me his demons. Let me take that from him so he can't, he doesn't suffer anymore. And I just took on subconsciously some of his darkness. And I think it was around, I want to say nine. And by the time that I got to 12, I was probably the darkest I've ever been in my life, even now. So 12, 13, 14, all the way up until about 20 years old, I lived with demons in my own way. I struggled with depression. I struggled with suicidal thoughts. I tried to kill myself twice, you know, and it was like, that's when I really, I didn't have the recognition, but as I was crying and having this breakdown and realizing that I was always trying to save my dad and I was always trying to take things on for him and to help him and his suffering and I was just crying and sobbing because it was always like he would be fleeting you know because that's the one beautiful th beautiful thing about my dad is he was trying to heal he was trying to stay sober and to be like 
There was times where I lived with him and he was sober and we would have these magical, wonderful, beautiful conversations. And, but it was always like, here's my dad. He's here. He's present. Now he's not, you know, it's like, okay, so it's all, here's my dad again. Like he's present. He's talking to me. I have my dad. And then he would start drinking again. And then it would be like, okay, my dad's not here anymore. And so for even while he was alive, it was like these fleeting, I was always chasing him. You know, I was always like, is he here? No. Okay. I got to wait. Oh, he's back now. You know, I was always like chasing in these fleeting moments of presence with him. And it just started to make so much sense. So basically I was having this moment of all of this con con like collided for me at that moment where I watched Thor and then I, I started just bawling and being like, what is this about? And I looked at myself and I was like, I just saw all of it. I saw me taking on. I saw that I could see the stuff, the darkness that was around. And I was immersed in this darkness growing up. And I took that on and how that created the relationship that I had with my own demons and my own self-hatred and my own condemning. And I just started seeing these pieces and remembering like how like the loss of that and how I felt when I lost my dad and I was just screaming out and I always just felt like I just had been screaming out for him of like why where like because this guy was looking at his daughter being like protect my love and it's like my dad left you know what I'm saying like he just kept leaving me and it's like I just saw it all so differently in that moment as I was crying and getting brought to that wound that I was always trying to escape myself Oh, are you there? I'm here. All right. Back on. Can you hear me? Back on. I can hear you now. Yep. Okay. Where was I last left? Don't ask me. Okay. I thought all I kind of remember, but, um, so basically I was having this moment of all of this con con like collided for me at that moment where I watched Thor and then I, I started just bawling and being like, what is this about? And I looked at myself and I was like, I just saw all of it. I saw me taking on, I saw that I could see the stuff, the darkness that was around and I was immersed in this darkness growing up and I took that on and how that created the relationship that I had with my own demons and my own self-hatred and my own condemning. And I just started seeing these pieces and remembering like, how like the loss of that and how I felt when I lost my dad and I was just screaming out and I always just felt like I just had been screaming out for him of like, why, where, like, cause I, this guy was looking at his daughter being like, protect my love. And it's like, my dad left, you know what I'm saying? Like he just kept leaving me. And it's like, I just saw it all so differently in that moment as I was crying and getting brought to that wound that I was always trying to escape myself. Okay. So one thing that I should also add to this is I am someone who is a truth seeker and who is a healer and who has been asking myself and the universe, what is my, what is my core wound? What is blocking me from moving forward in my life? in all areas of my life. What is holding me back? And that is what I had asked at my um, retreat. That's what I had kind of been asking myself even after the retreat. And that's when getting brought to this space, I just realized how my environment and in my subconscious mind, I had created this story of con condemning myself, hating myself, and taking on other people's darkness for them. And so that has led me in all relationships in my life, not just with boys or men or who I've dated, but even with friendships and different pieces and stuff as well. But the big thing for me that I saw with this is I was always trying to take on other people's stuff, you know, saving people, helping people, taking on, like, I would take on so much from the, my partners, like, whatever they were, I'd be like, well, I'll just take it on for you, and I'll heal you, and I'll do this for you, and whatever it is, 
And this breakdown helped me to realize that you can save no one but your own self. Because I tried everything in my power that I could possibly do to save my father, to help bring him out of the darkness. And if he didn't make that choice for himself, there was nothing that I could do about it. You know, it's different if we see like a hurt animal on the road. Of course we can help it and save it. If we see someone hurt in real life and whatever, of course we can help them and save them. You know, if some, if there's like a little kid in the pool and they can't swim, of course you're going to jump in and help them, you know? But when it comes to saving someone's real life soul, having them grow and change, and no matter how much you want that for them, they themselves have to choose it. And I'm coming to the place now where I finally saw my abandonment wound and it has nothing to do with my dad abandoning me. It was my abandonment of my own self. At that time, I couldn't see that because I was a child and I couldn't put it into words. But now in my adult brain, I see how that wiring and the story and the energy and the environment that I was in has created this piece of me abandoning myself willing to martyr myself to save other people. And in order for me to truly save myself, I have to be willing to let my dad go. I have to be willing to let that abandonment go. I have to be willing to step into myself and say, you know, that's your journey and your path and I love you and I bless you on your journey and I love myself and I bless myself right here right now too. And that was the biggest thing is I blamed myself for so long so long I had so much guilt of I couldn't save him I didn't do enough I'm not enough I can't love myself he didn't love me enough he didn't love himself you know of course I'm gonna of course men are gonna abandon me and leave me and this and that and I'm gonna abandon myself but last night as I cried that out and I was shown how I took on these things, we take on stuff for people sometimes that we don't even have any idea that we're consciously doing that, you know, and for those that we love and we, it's like that thing that we started talking about with they, you know, when we're children, we're, they are God, they are what we listen to, they are, they know better, they have been here longer, but when you grow up and you start to realize that you didn't, you weren't able to do certain things, but they also didn't know either. You know, that's where this true compassion comes in and this true compassion for seeing yourself and hearing yourself and understanding yourself. I finally was just brought to this place of if I'm going to really love myself, I have to let my dad go. And that's yeah, what I was doing. That's super powerful. That's so powerful, you know? And it's just such a really big thing um, with a lot of us that who are always trying to save other people, you know, we all, all, a lot of us get caught up in that, especially as women. We're always trying to make sure everybody else is okay at the detriment a lot of the time of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And I shared this story with my mom, you know, because I like to kind of, should I talk about this? Should I not talk about this? And she actually did. She encouraged me to talk about this today as well, because she said, you know, I think similar people who grew up in similar situations, they may not have the words to describe their internal world right now that you do. And so you can describe that abandonment that's going on that people are facing. You can describe that guilt and that pain and that shame and those pieces and to know that you can cry, you can let it go, you can see it, you can face it, you can hear it, and you can move through it. And that here I am today, and I survived that. I survived yesterday. I survived looking at that stuff. I Not only did I look at it, but I saw it, I heard it, and I understood it, and I filled myself with, and I chose to love myself. And I chose to reach out to like-minded people to help me move through it. And I chose to do something different with it this time, rather than 
you're right, I should abandon myself and hate myself. Instead, I finally said for the first time, nope, you're right, I should love myself and bless myself. Instead of abandoning myself, I chose to show up for myself, and it made a huge difference. Just by calling you yeah. and saying, this is what this, I didn't push it away. I didn't say, yeah, I don't know why I'm crying a Thor movie or whatever. You know, I said, whoa, here's something, and I got to look at this, and I got to let this go, because I deserve to be who I am. I deserve love. I deserve blessings. I deserve to be here, here and now, in this world, and live my dream. And that's what everyone deserves. Yeah. And the biggest question everyone's yeah. been asking is, well, how do I do that? It's going to look a little like crying a lot. All <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. We're back. Woo. All right. Well, yeah. Wow. That was super powerful. And I hope that that um, helps someone or more than just one someone, yeah. anybody that needed to hear about that stuff. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And that's another thing. It's too. very, very it's cool. Just, it's the time. It's just time. And I, and that's what I just keep hearing over and over as well. Like it's time to heal. It's time to look at this stuff. It's time to see ourselves. It's time to understand ourselves. You know, it's like, and we're moving through a very intense time period within just the energetic cosmic forces. And I know that's something that not a lot of people have maybe an understanding around, but the planets are doing major things right now. And we are confronting our relationship, our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with our environment, our relationship with the world around us, a relationship with people in our lives. And it's really important to be conscious and aware of what's holding us back from love right now. And that's what I was shown. That's what's holding me back from love. That's what's holding me back from loving myself, loving my world, loving and stepping into that. And so I invite the listeners and whoever hears this story to just start asking yourself the question of how can I choose love in this moment for myself? How can I choose love? What does love look like to me? What does love feel like to me? And I'm not talking romantic love. I'm talking real love for yourself. It, we also get told a lot about this romantic love is the love that we should search for and yearn for and go after. And the first and foremost thing that we do need to look at and go after is the love of ourselves. And that was what the biggest message that I got within the last two days was about. Cool. What do you think about doing a little bit of uh, heart breathing and whole pono pono? Yeah, for sure. Because I probably heavy stuff right there. Yeah. All right, let's do that. So let's everybody just kind of close your eyes gently. Start focusing on your breath. And I want you to focus on your breath as it moves in and out through your nose. Focus on your breathing, noticing the breath and all the sensations that go along with the breath. Noticing the breath as it moves in through your nose down into your lungs, into your belly, and as it moves back out again. Now I want you to bring your awareness down into your heart space, right down in the center of your chest. And I want you to begin to breathe in and out through your heart. We know that we can't physically breathe in and out through our hearts, but we can imagine that we're doing so. You can say to yourself, I'm breathing in through my heart. I'm breathing out through my heart. And 
And now we're going to do a technique called Ho'oponopono. And this is where we're going to send forgiveness. Sending forgiveness out to other people sometimes seems easier. And this time we're going to send forgiveness out to ourselves. Connecting to ourselves right now as we are. Not trying to change anything about ourselves, just noticing ourselves as we sit right here. Breathing in and out through the heart. Now I want you to repeat after me these words. I'm sorry. I forgive you. I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I forgive you. I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I forgive you. I love you. Thank you. You're sending these words to yourself sending forgiveness right here and right now. Let's continue with the words. I'm sorry. I forgive you. I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I forgive you. I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I forgive you. I love you. Thank you. Breathing in and out through the heart. Just sit here in this for a moment. Feeling the peace that forgiveness for yourself can bring. Let's take a deep breath in and release it. All right, come on back. Thank you. Well, I think that that's a, a good place for us to, to stop today. We talked about a lot of things, and um, unless you have something else to, to say, Sid? No, I think that's good. I think I'm just thankful for anyone who's listening, and I hope my intent and my hope for you is that this brought healing to your world, and I wish you the best. Yeah, and of course we want to um, say thank you to everyone and also... Mercury retrograde <laughs> in case parts of this podcast are, <laughs> oh yeah, some of the stuff, I hope that everything comes through and that we, we recorded everything because yeah, there's a lot of technical issues that we're trying to iron it all out and it, you know, eventually it'll get yeah. there. Um, and we just want, I wanted to let everybody know too, that um, next time we're going to have our first guest. Yeah who is Kirsty Colette, and she is a healer from New Zealand. She is a very, very special woman, um, does something, some sort of healing thing that I have never in my life come across, and I've come across a lot of different uh, types of healing, and this is something so unique, and um, I'm really excited to meet with her. Uh, that's going to be in our next 
episode, episode three, Yay. Kirstie Colette. And I'm really excited too. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone. All right. So I'm going to say goodbye. And bye, Sid. And bye, I will, I'm sure I will talk to you very yes, soon. Yes, you will. Namaste. Thank you for joining Sydney and I for this episode of The Goddess and the Medicine Woman. If you would like to learn more about us and what we do, head on over to innerelementwellness.com for Sid or to the spiritualtools.com for me.